Hi, in this lesson, we'll learn about while loops. Let's get started. As a quick warm up, let's create a calculator class with the static method sum that asks a user for two numbers and prints the sum of those numbers as a double. Can you figure out the steps you need to take in order to complete this method? You can pause this video while you write down your answers. Here are the steps written out for this method. Did you get it right? First, we need to declare the method. We need to include the static keyword so that we can call the method without having to create a calculator object, and the keyword void because the method doesn't return anything. Next, we need to create a scanner to take user input. Using that scanner, we want to take two values from the user that we will eventually sum together. And finally, we can print out the results of that sum with a string that describes what two values are being added and the eventual result. Here's a working example of the static method sum we just created. Our method is great for adding two numbers, but often we want to add more than two values together. What would we have to do if we wanted to add more values? With our current method, that actually proves to be pretty difficult. If we wanted to add more values to the total sum, we would have to add a new print statement and a new call to scanner every single time we wanted to add a value. That would be a very tedious process. Luckily, we can avoid writing repetitive code by using while loops in our programs. While loops allow us to repeat a set of statements until a specific condition is met. Let's take a look at what that means. Similarly to if statements, while loops evaluate a Boolean expression. If the expression evaluates to true, then the code in the curly brackets will execute. If the expression evaluates to false, then the while loop will be skipped over. The main difference is that once the code within the while loop is executed, the program returns to the Boolean expression to re-evaluate the condition. If the expression is still true after a run through the while loop, the while loop will run again. If it becomes false as a result of the code executed in the while loop, then the while loop will stop. This is a look at the while loop flowchart. As indicated by the chart, the while loop will repeat itself until the condition in the while loop is false. Only once the condition in the while loop is false will any code that follows be executed. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have created a simple countdown program using a while loop. We've created a variable called countdown and set the Boolean expression to be countdown greater than zero, indicating that if countdown is greater than zero, the while loop will execute. It's incredibly important that the countdown variable is initialized before the start of the while loop because the while loop relies on the countdown variable to decrease every time through the loop. Without this, our while loop would run infinitely. We'll talk about this later. For now, let's hit run. On the first pass through, the expression evaluates as true, as countdown is greater than zero. The while loop now will execute. The first action is to print the value of countdown, which in this case is three. Next, the value of countdown is reduced by one. This is a crucial step in the program. Can you guess why? Now the code within the while loop has finished. The program will go back to the initial while loop condition to test if the condition is still true. Since the condition is still true because two is greater than zero, the while loop will run again. The value of countdown will print, which is now two, and then the value of countdown is reduced by one. The while loop then returns to the beginning to test the initial condition again. Once again, the value of countdown is greater than zero, so the while loop executes. The value of countdown is printed, and then countdown is reduced by one. The while loop then returns to the beginning to test the condition again. This time, however, the condition within the while loop evaluates to false. As a result, the while loop is not executed. Since the while loop condition is false, the next line of code that executes is the final print statement that follows the while loop. It's important to note that this doesn't get called at all until the while loop condition is false, as the line of code follows the while loop. Here is an example of this program live. 
Notice that we can change the value of countdown and the while loop will adjust accordingly. We don't have to write any additional code for this to work with countdown equals three or countdown equals 10 because the loop repeats itself until the value of countdown is zero in either case. Here is a look at that problem as a flowchart. Even if we have a while loop in our program, there is a possibility that it never executes at all. If the value of countdown starts at zero, then the initial while loop condition is false and the while loop will never be executed. The only code that will execute in this case is the countdown complete print statement. This while loop only works because of the countdown minus minus call. If this wasn't included in the program, the program would run forever. If we remove countdown minus minus, then the value of countdown never changes. If the value of countdown is always three, then the while loop condition will always be true. If the condition is always true, then the program will never stop. When a while loop runs forever, it is referred to as an infinite loop. This generally causes our programs to crash because the compiler isn't prepared to run the program infinitely. When writing while loops, it's important to pay attention to the condition that you are adding so that the program eventually exits. Here's a live shot of this program in action. Notice that the countdown continuously prints the number three as the countdown variable doesn't change in value during the while loop. This program will run indefinitely because the countdown variable never changes value. Let's get some practice writing while loops. In this problem, figure out what code you need to add in order to get this while loop to stop running forever. For this problem, we need to add a statement that increases the value of x. Without this, the value of x remains zero and the program will run forever. This ensures that x will increase in value on each iteration through the loop. Here's another practice problem. Figure out what condition we need to add to the while loop in order to get it to stop executing. For this one, we just need to add the correct condition. Since the password length is zero to start, and on each iteration through the loop, an A is added, we want to make sure that the program stops once the password is at length eight. We can make sure that happens by testing the length of the password each iteration through the loop. Once the password is the right length, the program will stop. Another way that we can try to avoid infinite loops is by adding break statements to our while loops. Break statements allow you to break out of the while loop and execute statements that follow once the while loop terminates. Infinite loops occur when the condition in a while loop is always true. That means if we were to write a while true in our program, we would be creating a while loop designed to run infinitely. We can actually use while true statements in our programs because there are keywords in Java designed to halt the execution of a while loop, regardless of status of the while loop condition. Break statements are an example of a keyword that will halt the execution of a while loop. Let's look at an example. In this particular program, the while loop condition is set to true. This means the program will run infinitely because the condition will never result in false. While this is an infinite loop, we can escape from it by using a break statement. The break statement allows us to exit the loop and continue to any code that follows the while loop. In this case, once the value of counter was equal to five, the program would halt the while loop and move on to the code immediately following the loop. Here is a live demo of that problem. Notice that the code throws an error when the infinite loop is initially called. This is because the statement following the loop will never be reached. When we add the break statement, the program eventually does stop and prints the final print statement following the loop. Note that if we didn't have the counter plus plus command at the bottom of the while loop, this would still be an infinite loop because the program would never evaluate the if statement as true. We can also halt the execution of a while loop by using the return keyword. The key difference between break and return is that break doesn't return any value to the method or constructor, but rather forces an exit from the while loop. In this example, there are two lines of code that are identical, except for the break versus return statement. 
When the password is equal to strong password, the break code will exit the while loop and continue to the next line of code that follows the while loop. For the return statement, the return keyword will prompt the program to stop and return back to the initial program that called the method. Let's take a closer look into these two programs. First, the variable password is initialized with the value weak password. Then the program enters a while loop. Because the condition is the Boolean true, the while loop will run. Password does not equal strong password, so the if statement evaluates to false and does not execute. The next line lets the user know there is a weak password and then prompts the user to type in a new one. In this case, let's imagine the user typed strong password. The while loop has reached the end, so it returns to the beginning. The while loop is true, so it executes. Password equals strong password, so the if statement is true and will execute. The if statement contains a break, which will exit the while loop immediately and move to the next line of code. In this case, the next line is a print statement that reads next line of code. If we were to look at this with a return statement, the result would be a bit different. The while loop will execute because the condition is true. The if statement will not execute because password is not equal to strong password. The user will see that they have a weak password and be prompted to input a new password. The user inputs strong password this time. The while loop checks the condition again and executes. Now the if statement executes and the string success is returned back to the initial program. Here the program stops and the final line of code in the program does not run. Another key difference between break and return is that break cannot hold any value. Now that we've learned a bit more about while loops, let's return to our original calculator class problem. Let's make an improved sum method where the user is asked how many numbers they want to sum together. Then it asks the user to input one number at a time, adding it to the running sum total each time. Using a while loop, how might we be able to accomplish this task? Pause the video and try to write out the steps. Here are the steps you might take to solve this problem. First, we want to create a scanner and ask the user how many numbers they are going to be adding together. We want to store that value. Next, we are going to want to create a counter to count the amount of times that the while loop is being run. The final setup before the while loop is to create a sum variable to store the sum of all the numbers. We put these variables on the outside of the while loop because we want their values to continually increase. If int sum equals zero were inside the while loop, then every time we went through the while loop, the sum would reset back to zero. We want sum to continue to increase, so the value needs to be set before the start of the while loop. Now we can create the while loop. We set the counter to be less than total numbers so that the program stops once all the numbers that the user inputs are calculated. Now we can ask the user to enter a number to add to our sum total. We can store that number in new number. We can now add that number to the sum total that we have created, so sum now reflects the additional number. Then we make sure the counter is increased so that the while loop eventually stops. Finally, we return the value of sum to the user. The return statement is on the outside of the while loop because we want the total sum after the while loop is over. If the return statement was in the while loop, it would stop executing after one run through the loop. Here is a look at that program in action. Take a look at the code in the calculator class and the code in my program to see how these programs are interacting. Now that you've learned about while loops, let's try to create some problems on our own in the code editor.